everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts, and today I'm creating another pop-up card using some new products from the Scrappy Tales shop. I'm going to be using rose petals for my stamp set and the new pop-up vase die set to create the actual pop-up. I'm also going to pull in a couple leaves from the assorted leaves die set. At the time I was filming this part, I wasn't sure if I would use them, but I do decide to tuck a couple in. So I'm showing this card from last week because I'm going to be coloring that large bouquet the exact same way. I used the exact same markers. So I'm not going to show that again. If you do want to see me coloring that large image, I will have the flat card linked in the video description if you want to check it out. But I will show you the coloring of these two single roses just because I didn't show that in the last video. Now for my pop-up vase, I did decide to cut off the vase on this image just because I thought it would be kind of weird to have a vase within a vase. So I'm only going to color up the two roses and the leaves that are inside the vase and then I will just fussy cut them out. Like I said, I am using the same markers that I used in last week's video. I can't remember the markers that I used at the top of my head, but I did take a picture of them and I will have them listed in the video description. So you guys know how I color. I like to color from darkest to lightest and lately I have been leaving a very bright center highlight on my images. So when I go in with my lightest marker I would typically blend all of the colors together and color the entire image. But with flowers I like to use flicking motions and I like to leave just the slightest amount of white space from the paper still showing to give you that really bright contrast. Some people might like this, some people might not. Um, it's just something that I've been experimenting with with my coloring and I've found that I really like it for flower images. So I will not do that with the leaves just because I am coloring them quite dark and I didn't want that harsh of a highlight. So I am going to use my lightest marker to shade the entire leaf and blend the mid-tone and the darker color together. So I want to mention while I color up this image that I do have some giveaways happening over on Instagram today and this entire week. I'm going to be giving away some of the stamp sets from the release, including this one that I'm coloring for day two. And I think I'll be posting that either on Tuesday or Wednesday. So if you haven't yet already, go ahead on over to my Instagram. I do have the hop still going on until the 16th. So you guys can hop along, leave your comments um, on the design team members posts, and then you're entered into the chance to win one of three $25 gift cards. And then, like I said, if you participate in the stamp set giveaways, all you have to do is tag your friends, leave a comment, and then you're entered to win two stamp sets for each giveaway. So here you can see I colored up all of my images and I die cut them with the coordinating dies. I cut way too many rose petals and extra leaves. I thought I would need them to like act as fillers in the vase, but they ended up being too small. I feel like they weren't substantial enough, so that's why I pulled in the assorted leaves die set. But we're gonna go ahead and assemble the vase. I cut the card base twice from heavyweight cardstock. You can see I just went ahead and creased all of the score lines. And before I assemble it together, I'm going to go ahead and decorate the octagon base. So I cut some Heartfelt Creations pattern paper from the solid two rectangles that came in the die set. I added ATG tape to them and now I'm just adhering them onto the two card base panels, which I cut from heavyweight white cardstock. You can see on the left there is a half inch tab. That is where you're going to add your double sided tape. So that is what I'm going to do right now. I'm taking my U-line, very very strong double sided tape, and I'm going to add one strip to both of the panels. And then I'm going to line the panels side by side. I'll attach one tab to the other panel without the tab, and then you're left with this long strip where you can go ahead and attach each end together to create that octagon shape. So very easy. So now we're going to move on to the bridges that are going to hold all of the elements inside the vase. So you can see that each bridge has three score lines. You're going to add your tape to the half inch tabs on both sides. I did cut this bridge out four times. You can do two or three times. 
um, but four is the max you can put inside this space. So I'm gonna do the max just because I want this to be very full. I added all my double-sided tape and now I'm going to crease the score lines, creating that triangle. And the way to do that is to just fold all of the score lines down or away from yourself. You wanna make sure that the tabs are facing each other. You don't want them to be facing apart, otherwise it will not um, fold. So here I'm just making my little triangles or my little arrows for all four. And then to attach them inside the vase, you can see I'm pointing at each point on the octagon. You're just gonna pick a random one. It doesn't have to be specific. And then you're going to attach one tab right up to the score line. And then you can see that there's another point and then there's a third point. So you're basically just going to skip that center point and glue your other tab to the following point. And then you'll attach your next bridge, which you're gonna butt up right against the one that you just added, right up to the score line without overlapping it. You're gonna skip the next point, which here I'm pointing at it, and then you're gonna to go to that third point. Again, I think what's most important here is that you want your tabs to be facing each other. And you can see we're at the halfway point. So we're gonna add our next bridge in. I'm pointing out the three points. I'm going to add my first tab right next to the bridge we just added. Skip the center point and go straight to the third one. And then we just have one more bridge left. And then that is going to create our star once this is added in. So again, we are going to add this fourth bridge right up to the bridge we just added. I like to do one tab at a time just to make sure everything is lined up. You're gonna skip that center point and then glue it to the third point. And there you are left with a star. If you have that shape, you're pretty much good to go. It's definitely one of those pop-ups where once you make one, you can make a whole bunch. I guarantee you guys, it's pretty easy. So here I am adding an acrylic stick to the side of this trio of roses. This was included in the stamp set. It was the flowers that were inside that large vase. So I just cut the vase off and I'm gonna use the flowers. I added that clear acrylic stick to one of the bridges in the vase, the one over to the right. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the back of the vase. So I'm taking another pretty thick acrylic stick attaching it to the side of the flower of the roses and then I will attach the stick to the bridge on the right. You might be tempted to add two bridges so that it's a little bit more stable but once you do that you can see when the card folds flat those bridges are expanding so it's not going to work. It's just going to pull and um, yeah just not work. So I just added one. So now it's time to fill in all those blank areas. So these are the two roses that came in that long skinny vase. And then this is the single rose that you get in the stamp set. So as you can see, I'm gluing a couple of the flowers onto the bridges, and then some of them I'm gluing the front of them and gluing them directly to the front of the card base. So that's just gonna give you some more depth and some more surface area to add your images. Here are those little rose petals. You saw that I had a lot of them, so I'm using them as fillers since I don't have as many large florals. Here's where I decide that I do wanna add in a couple of the branchy leaves from the Assorted Leaves die set just to fill in more areas. You can see um, those two large florals in the center of the vase, they have white on the back because I colored them on white Nina. You can use the coordinating dies and cut some green paper along with your colored images to back them with the green so that when you turn the card, you're not seeing as much white, but you're seeing more green instead. I kind of wish I did that just to help it blend a little bit more but I think I covered the majority of the white space so it didn't bother me too much, but that's a tip if you don't like any white space showing. So here's where I'm pulling in the assorted leaves. I'm also gonna use the baby's breath from that die set just to add a little bit of gold to the vase. 
So here is where I'm going to add most of these branches to the top of these trio of roses. Again, to try to cover as much white space as I can. And you can see that while I am adding my images, I am constantly turning the vase. I'm trying not to focus too much energy into one spot on the vase just because I'm trying to make this look symmetrical and I am limited on the images that I have. So I want to make sure that it looks pretty even on all sides. So I do like how those branchy leaves add a little bit of texture. These gold baby's breath pieces, I'm just going to tuck to the bottom of the vase and they just add a nice touch of gold and they add a little bit of texture to the flower arrangement. Okay, so I am just finishing up the last few pieces in this vase. I do want to mention that some of you have reached out to me asking about a craft room tour because I mentioned that I moved in December. That's why I was kind of MIA on YouTube for a while. And I am working on my craft room. I've actually never designed a craft room before, believe it or not. What I had at St. Petersburg when I was in school was just a desk and then I had like a storage unit in my closet. And then when we lived in our apartment, I had a room, but I wasn't really working there just because my mom's room is so much better and she only lived a couple minutes away. She still only lives a couple minutes away, but now I live in a house, I have a dedicated room for it. So I definitely want to start working here and I want the craft room to be perfect. I've saved a lot of money to, you know, create my dream craft room. So I've put a lot of thought into it, especially because I've significantly downsized the amount of space that I have. So I've had to be creative on ways to store my products. So basically I'm hoping to have the craft room tour by mid to late January. I am waiting on furniture pieces. Ikea has been extremely back ordered. I've taken several trips to Ikea all over Florida and I'm buying like literally one unit at a time because that's all I can do. So it's definitely a work in progress, but I think I'll get there and I'm super excited with what I've already have in there. So I will keep you guys updated on that. So here I finished the vase. I'm showing you guys how it folds flat. I'm trimming off all of the extra pieces that are hanging outside the vase because I wanna make sure that it can be mailed. I also made sure that those roses do not exceed seven inches, otherwise it won't fit. But this ended up being fine. I think it was six and three quarters, so it will definitely fit and it can be mail mailed. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I post my next video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.